Hence, we have covered liquidity ratio and solvency ratio. Now, the third type of ratio is activity ratio, or we also say turnover ratio. Activity ratio basically tells us the ability of the company to generate revenue out of their assets. Means ability or efficiency of the company in generation of revenue out of the assets available to it. So activity ratio. In activity ratio, we will be having four types of ratio as per our syllabus. Number one is inventory turnover ratio. We also said ITR. Number two, trade receivable turnover ratio. Number three, trade payable turnover ratio. And number four is working capital turnover ratio. Working capital turnover ratio has been removed from the syllabus, but then also I am explaining working capital turnover ratio just for sake of convenience, nothing else. If you want to study working capital turnover ratio, study it. Otherwise, you can leave it also. Now, moving on to number one, that is inventory turnover ratio. Second, trade receivable turnover ratio. Third, trade payable turnover ratio. And the fourth one is working capital turnover ratio. Number one, inventory turnover ratio. The formula for inventory turnover ratio is cost of revenue from operations. Cost of revenue from operations or cost of goods sold. Both means same thing. As per new format, we name it cost of revenue from operations. As per old format, we say cost of goods sold upon average inventory. Here, average inventory. In inventory, we will be again excluding spares and tools and we will be including raw material, purchase of stock in trade or simply we can say stock in trade, WIP, work in progress and finished goods. Average inventory is being calculated as opening inventory plus closing inventory by 2. When I say opening inventory or closing inventory, in opening we have to sub add all these items that is raw material plus stock in trade opening opening balance of raw material plus opening balance of stock in trade plus opening balance of WIP plus opening balance of finished goods in the same way in the same way in closing inventory we have to take the balance of closing inventory of raw material plus closing inventory of work in progress plus closing inventory of finished goods then opening inventory plus closing inventory by 2 will give me average inventory. Here we can also use add stock in trade. Stock in trade. But we have to remember that in average inventory we have to exclude spares and tools. We have to exclude spares and tools. Then next moving on to the formula of cost of revenue from operations. In cost of revenue from operations, we have a lot of formula to calculate cost of goods sold that we will be studying under profitability ratio. Here, I will be simply writing that is opening inventory plus net purchase. Net purchase here means purchase minus purchase return plus direct expenses. Minus closing inventory. Here, direct expenses refers to all kinds of expenses that has been included in debit side of trading account. If you remember, so direct expenses here means wages, wages and salary, carriage inward, cartage inward. Freight inward, octroi, these all are inward, carriage inward, cartage inward, freight inward, octroi, power and fuel. 
in i mean in short if you want to understand direct expenses will include all the debit expenses on the debit side expenses of trading account which we used to write in class 11 if you just go back and remind those things you will come to know whatever the items that were included in debit side of trading account will form part of direct expenses so cost of goods sold opening inventory plus purchase minus purchase return that is net purchase plus direct expenses minus closing inventory and average inventory is opening inventory plus closing inventory by 2 by using these two formulas we will get the data for inventory turnover ratio formula that is cost of revenue from operation upon average inventory here another thing that we need to calculate may it be that it will be asked in the question to calculate inventory conversion period inventory conversion period means the time a company takes to convert its material or you can say its inventory into sales so the formula is very simple or you can say the the time its formula is 365 days or 52 weeks if you want to calculate in weeks then it will be 52 weeks or if you want to calculate in months then it will be 12 months upon i t r inventory turn over ratio inventory conversion period is the period that is required in order to convert the raw material into sales or in order to convert it into fresh goods and so that it can be sold in the market so i think inventory turnover ratio and inventory conversion period is okay so moving on to the next formula of activity turnover ratio that is trade receivable turnover ratio in trade receivable turnover ratio the formula comes that is net i credit sales or credit revenue from operations credit revenue from operations upon average trade receivable average trade receivable trade receivable means debtors even sundry debtors account receivables and bill receivable while calculating average trade receivable the formula becomes opening trade receivable one thing we need to take care here is that we will not subtract provision for doubtful debts or provision for discount on debtors in order to get our opening trade receivable or in order to get our closing trade receivable because we are interested here not to know the real realizable value of the debtors but that how how in how many days or you can say for how much period the money is stuck in the form of debtor so we will never include exclude provision for doubtful debts or provision for discount on debtors here while calculating average trade receivable we will be required to be cautious while calculating opening trade receivable and closing trade receivable we should by any means not subtract either provision for doubtful debts or provision for discount on debtors while calculating opening trade receivable or closing trade receivable it should not be taken into consideration many times we made mistakes and our answer goes wrong and our marks are being deducted for that so be very careful that we will not be taking or we will not be even considering provision for doubtful debts or provision for discount on debtors either calculate either calculating opening trade receivable or closing trade receivable thus we can say average trade receivable equal to opening trade receivable plus closing trade receivable divided by 2 now 
jumping onto the credit now credit credit sales or credit revenue from operation is will be directly given in the question so we don't need to bother for the formula for credit revenue from operations here only one thing you need to take care while doing the sums always focus is the sales given or credit sales given may it be credit sales basically i would like to explain it better so that you can understand sales or revenue from operation means credit sale or credit revenue from operation plus cash sales since those sales which have been made in cash for that we have not any data so we don't need to consider cash sales while calculating trade receivable turnover ratio so we only take into consideration credit sales rather than whole sales if only sales amount is given then we can consider it in our formula if it is not clear ki whether it is cash sale or credit sales then we will consider the whole sales amount or whole revenue from operation amount as credit sales the another thing that we need to calculate and uh, trade report trade receivable turnover period is only average collection period average collection period means that in how many days company is able to collect money from debtor another name for it, it is debtor velocity or you can say trade receivable velocity means the speed with which company get back its money from the debtor trade receivable velocity the formula is same the way we did it in inventory conversion period that is 365 days if we want to calculate it in days 52 weeks if we want to calculate it in weeks or 12 months if we want to calculate in months upon trade receivable turn over ratio now the third formula under activity turn over ratio is trade payable turn over ratio that is trade payable turn over ratio before that i would again like to mention here that while calculating average trade receivable do not take provision for doubtful dates or provision for discount on debtors do not subtract it from trade receivables otherwise your question will get wrong so now jumping on to trade payable turn over ratio in trade payable turn over ratio the formula will become its average trade receivable instead of trade receivable it will become average trade payable or in the denominator credit sales will convert into credit purchase because it's related to our vendors from where we buy our raw materials on credit and trade payable here means creditors trade creditors account payable and bill pay the same formula for calculating average trade payable i am writing it in short in abbreviation so that it can take less time the formula will be same that is opening trade payable plus closing trade payable by 2 here also we will not take into consideration provision for discount on creditors while calculating opening trade payable or closing trade payable which means we will not subtract will not subtract provision for discount on creditors while calculating opening trade payable discount on creditor while calculating opening trade payable or closing trade payable otherwise our question will our answer will get wrong please consider it again and again that in average while calculating trade receivable average trade receivable we will be not subtracting provision for debts provision for doubtful debts and provision for discount on debtors and while calculating bill payable or meant to say trade payable we will not be subtracting provision for discount on creditors while coming on to our answer otherwise our answer will get wrong next formula that comes is working capital turnover ratio working capital turnover ratio formula is very easy that is revenue from operations here we take overall revenue no net credit sales nothing revenue from operations or sales 
Here sales, when I say sales, it is net sales. Net sales basically means sales minus sales return. Sales minus sales return. If sales return is given in the question, in any of the turnover question, wherever we have used sales in the numerator side, on the numerator part, then we have to subtract sales return from that also. The formula is very simple, net sales upon working capital. We know working capital is of two types. Number one, working capital means here, current asset minus current liability and net sales we already know how to calculate it net revenue from operations net revenue from operations we have to understand one thing here working capital is of two types number one gross working capital gross working capital means only current asset but when we say net working capital it means current asset minus current liability and here we are actually means net is implied here so working capital here means current asset minus current liability and net sales implies sales minus sales return in this video we have learned all four types of activity ratio that is inventory turnover ratio trade receivable turnover ratio trade payable turnover ratio and the fourth one is working capital turnover ratio working capital turnover ratio we have seen many sub formulas under its ratio. So these are the four formulas under activity or turnover ratio which we have to study from our examination point of view and you can see the notes of all these formulas given with clarity on my blog that is www.gyanbikab.blogspot.in Thanks for watching this video and I hope that you have understood all the concepts related to ratio. I have divided the ratio chapter in four parts so that you can understand and you can read and you can view this video easily and one by one in order to get the clarity on each of the ratios we are having in our syllabus.